go back in time about 30 minutes ago. Where do you think you were 30 minutes ago? You were probably waiting outside in the lines, waiting to come in, can't wait, too excited, right? Big day. Now, imagine you're there. And the guy next to you, right, standing right beside you, he suddenly clutches his chest, falls to the ground. What are you going to do? Maybe you should take a photo and put it up on Facebook or Twitter. But, but honestly, have you really thought about what you're going to do if something like this happens? Well, in an ideal situation, what you would expect to happen would be that of all the people around you in those lines, someone would stop doing what they're doing and try to help the poor guy, right? But unfortunately, that's not always the case. That's not always what happens. I'm sure you've read about or even been in circumstances where you see people who obviously need help and there's people all around them, but they're just walking by doing nothing. Why does that happen? Well, one of the reasons why that happens is because of a so-called bystander effect. What this bystander effect basically means is that if you are in need of urgent medical attention, the greater the number of people around you, the more the people around you, the less the chances that you will get that help. Now, that sounds ridiculous. It doesn't make sense, right? But it does happen. And it happens partly because, because there are so many people in the group. Each one, of that, each one of that group is thinking, oh, there's so many people around. I don't need to do anything. Someone else might do anything. Or um, there's so many people around. Surely someone must have called an ambulance, so I don't need to. So each person ends up feeling less responsible for taking action. And what often ends up happening is that no one does anything. So that's one. However, what I feel is the major problem is the fact that you just don't know what to do. You're standing there in shock, guy on the ground, your feet are glued, you are stuck to the ground, you have no idea what to do. That's probably the case with most of the people around you. And every single second that passes by with that poor man on the ground, his chances of survival might decrease dramatically. So the combination of the bystander effect combined with the fact that no one knows what to do can be deadly. And it's a big, big, big problem. But is there a solution to that problem? Yes, there is a solution. And I'm here to tell you about it today. And the solution is basic life support. So I'm going to ask you guys a question. Just give me a show of hands. How many of you have taken or been through a first aid or a basic life support course before? Just give me a show of hands. Wow. So just look around. So few of you. <laughs> if something like that should happen here, <laughs> may God help us all. Well, anyway, so as a, as a first year medical student at Cornell, about a month ago, I had to take uh, this basic life support course at Hamad Hospital. And what they taught me there was how to deal with medical emergencies like this one as the first one on scene. So what I learned was how to deal with something as small as a simple wound to something as severe and life-threatening as a heart attack. And I am sitting through that training, and I'm going through it, and I'm thinking that, man, this is important stuff. It shouldn't just be limited to medical students. Everybody should know this. And that's why I'm here, to spread the message. So keeping that in mind, let's do something. Let's go back to 30 minutes ago. OK, let's rewind. Let's go back to 30 minutes ago. And, but this time, let's suppose that you're standing there, and you've been through this course before. You are trained in basic life support. And let's see how things will go then. Yellow? Oh, <laughs> feel better. Oh, well, take two. What's the scene? You're standing in line outside. Guy next to you, clutches chest, falls down. What do you do? Do you react the same way as before? No, not this time. What do you do? It would be something like this. You run to him. You shake him. Are you OK? Are you OK? There's no response. He doesn't respond to you. He's unconscious. What do you do next? You check if he's breathing. You see that he's not breathing. What do you do next? You point to someone specific in the people around you. You call an ambulance. Why do you do that? You point to someone specific to give them and only them the responsibility of doing something. You are breaking the bystander effect. They know that they have to do it, and they will go and do it. So while they're off to do their job, what do you do next? You check if the person has a pulse. You check if the person has a pulse, and you find that there's no pulse, which means what? Which means that his heart has stopped. Now let's talk about the heart for a bit. Your heart doesn't look like this. It actually looks like this. And it's the size of your fist. And it's right here, smack in the middle of your chest, right here. And what does the heart do? The heart pumps blood, right? Where? To the rest of your body, to your brain. What's so important about the brain is that it always needs oxygen. The brain is going to die within four to six minutes if it doesn't get oxygen. 
Now, this is so important that I'm going to say it again. The brain dies within four to six minutes if it does not get enough oxygen. So in our little case here, his heart has stopped. His brain is not getting any oxygen. He is going to die if no one does anything, right? So this lends an, <clears throat> a sense of urgency to the situation. And if a guy is brain dead, nothing you do to try to bring him back will work. He is gone. So something needs to be done. But what do you do? You got to make sure <laughs> that the brain gets the oxygen it needs. So you do that by something called CPR. What is CPR? Cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR. Cardio means the heart, pulmonary means the lungs, and resuscitation means to revive, to bring back. So when you're doing CPR, you pump the heart for the heart. How do you do that? Well, you take the heel of your hand right here. You put it at the bone here, middle bone, sternum, right? You lock your finger, oh, feel better. You lock your fingers like this, and then you start compressing. Now, when you're, when you're doing that, what you're doing is you're making sure that the brain needs the oxygen it needs to stay alive. And you keep doing that until the ambulance arrives and the paramedics take over. So, let's do something. Let's put all of this together and then see how it would look like. You run to the patient, you try to ask if he's okay, no response. Check breathing, he's not breathing. What do you do next? Point to someone specific in the audience, call an ambulance, he goes. You check for pulse, there is no pulse. Check for pulse, no pulse, start CPR. And you keep doing CPR until the ambulance arrives and the paramedics take over. And you probably ended up saving his life. So let's think, about, let's just think about the two situations. In the first one, you are absolutely lost. You have no clue whatsoever to do. Standing there, just in shock. In the second one, you are calm, you are focused. You know what to do, you go in and you do it. You, and probably save his life. So guys, this is, this is not really rocket science. You don't have to be a medical student or a doctor to do it. You can be anybody and you can do it. And Hamad Hospital trains 3,000 people a year in this, and you can be one of them. And it is something that will continue with you throughout your life, and you never know when you might have to use it. So if you're interested in getting it, the information is right up there. Just go for it. Thank you very much. <laughs>